make me feel better, make my lower back pain go away, um, mm -hmm. and all the other issues I'm having with my stomach, with my nose. So yeah, quite a lot of stuff. Okay, let's break it down. So yeah. low back pain, does the pain stay right there or does it go anywhere else in your body? Nope, it just stays in the lower back. Mm -hmm. uh, happens when I stand for too long. Mm -hmm. You said about uh, digestion, what's going on with that? Um, well, over the last like five years, I've grown to not be able to eat certain types of food. Uh, and I just discover more and more foods that I can't eat because after I eat it, I have to like run to the bathroom or I just get like extreme stomach pain or it becomes like bloated. And that just, you know, is its own world of problems. What kind of foods have you know that triggers it? Um, the worst I would say is egg yolks, mm -hmm. um, which I love. Um, I can't have any like milk or dairy products. So that's mm -hmm. another big one. And then like f certain fruits and nuts like grapes, watermelon, um, almonds, pistachios. So, okay. Yeah, some like weird things. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. And then you said about breathing. What's going on with breathing? Well, I can't like breathe as much as I want to. Like my, my airway is really restricted and it's been like that for like a really long time. And I got a septoplasty to correct the deviation to help me breathe better. But my nasal septum collapsed like a week after the surgery. So it's been bad ever since. Uh, I've been thinking about going to like a surgeon to get that corrected. Mm -hmm. But right now, like I, I can't breathe at all. And I also have allergies to like dust mites and pollen. So uh, if my bed isn't like perfectly cleaned and that just, you know, doubles down on it and I can't mm -hmm. breathe at all. And then I have to breathe through my mouth the whole night. Gotcha. So, so to clarify to the viewers, he's talking about his deviated septum. Okay. And yeah. he had a deviated septum surgery, yeah. but then it only lasts for one week. Yeah. And it already <laughs> collapsed and failed. Yeah. And that one was five years ago. Um, I'm 22 now. That was when I was like 15, 16. So about, seven. Yeah. yeah, six, seven years. Gotcha. You only uh, trouble is breathing to one nostril versus the other? Well, I, I think at, at any given point, like one is always better than the other, but it constantly like switches. Okay. So like my septum is like deviated this way and I could like literally feel it. Mm -hmm. um, so I would think that this one would be better, but sometimes this one, the one where it has less space actually breathes better than this. So it's constantly switching. Okay, let's come a little closer over here. Okay, so let's show it to the viewers over here. Just go ahead, close one nostril. Take a nice deep breath in, do that. Okay, switch. Okay, so the left nostril is clearly clogged up. Yeah. And we already can see to the viewers that, yeah, his nose is deviating towards that way. So we're gonna see what's going on with all that stuff, all right? Now, as the viewers, as I don't know if you hear it, right? when he was landing on his right foot down, it was much more louder than your left heel, all right? Mm -hmm. So same thing I was also hearing while you're walking up and down, you're doing some interesting compensations. One of them is that you're trying to swing your right leg around, so you're sucking up a little bit, but also you're landing much more harder with your right heel. As long as your heel striking earlier, and louder on the right one versus the left. So what makes that kind of misalignment is this. For our pelvis over here, okay? Mm -hmm. According to our textbook, in the Gansa textbook, when the right hip itself, when it tilts forward, what it does is it causes and makes the leg go longer. Therefore, you're gonna heel strike earlier and you're gonna make a louder thud noise. Okay. Whereas when your left hip, okay, when you start going backwards, what's called a PI misalignment, it actually makes your leg a little shorter. So therefore, it's a much more softer mm -hmm. and not so loud pat, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, other component is this. Usually, and that's what I'm also seeing here in the x-rays, you, you do have a very slight EX misalignment as well. And I do see a part of it on the gait itself, but it's very subtle. So in other words, you, have, you don't have a typical misalignment. Usually when we have a combination misalignment, they like to be hand in hand, all right? Okay. So mm -hmm. a PI is just what we call a posterior inferior, PI for short, mm -hmm. and the external rotation. So PIEX like to go as a combination hand in hand, okay? So 
But that's not what we have. We have opposites. So it's sort of like having a magnet going positive and negative, positive and negative. You know, it's like it's kind of, kind of, you know, when we're talking about the positive and positive, it's trying to attract each other. Yeah. That's what we're talking about. It's like it's a little weird. awkward. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have that awkward combination on right now where mm -hmm. it's a, where it has tilted anterior superior, meaning AS miscellane, and it also externally rotated like this a little bit as well. So your body is trying to fight and try to adapt with that compensation. And now we just gotta take a closer look and see why. Okay, go ahead, march in place. Okay, now that's stuck. Keep on marching. Okay, stop right there. So this is what we already confirmed on him, okay? That normal, these thumbs supposed to be moving up and down. The right one is not. So therefore, we already identified this is the fixation. This is the potential problem. We need to isolate, see what's going on with that. Now, when we isolate and go into the PIIS, what we're trying to find is, okay, the hip bones themselves are supposed to move and tilt downwards. Okay. On him, as you, saw, as you see, my right thumb was going on the external rotation. So that confirms that, okay, we got an EX misalignment going on over here. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. So when we palpate them all over here, okay, see my thumbs, it's a little bit higher on the right and a little bit lower on the left. So this confirms, so we do have the anterior superior misalignment of the right hip itself, AS over here, and how is this, sir? Is it tender over here? Yeah, it is. Or tender on the top? Um, tender on the bottom, correct? Yeah, I would say more so on the bottom. And so that's also another thing that confirms in our, in the Gaza textbook, it talks about when the hips start misaligning anterior superior, it starts to open up the, the PSIS, the secret leg joint itself, and there's gonna be some edema and fluid over here, and that's what's gonna be tender over here. So to clarify, it's this over here. So when this hip itself starts moving anterior and superior, it opens up this joint space over here. So when I test it and palpate it, you measure, okay, that doesn't feel fun. And it's uncomfortable, it's painful, mm -hmm. and there's a tenderness. So that helps confirm, again, this is a potential problem. Now I'm gonna test this area over here. So if this is a EX, you would, the EX misalignment, it would externally rotate this way, it would open up this joint capsule over here, yeah. and it would be tender over here, as it should, okay? What about here? A little bit. A little bit, right? A little bit. But the bottom part even more. Yeah, that one's more, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, but here? That one, yeah, it's starting to. Okay. Yeah. What about here? Not too bad, huh? No, it's, so. Not too bad, not too bad. Not too bad here. Ah, uh, yeah. Kind of decent, right? Yeah. Well, painful over here? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so yeah. that's that's still part of the EX. Oh, okay. okay. We got, so we got combination. So going over the patient's history, we're talking about, so okay, we have some localized low back pain, no sciatica. We also have digestion issues, and also have deviated septum, you know, post, you know, post-surgery -surg uh, complications with that, and then still have issues with that. So. When I take a look at the extras over here, just briefly, right off the bat, so when I see a bigger glass over here, the small intestine seems to be okay, but the larger intestines, there's a lot of bowel gas going on over here and a lot of undigested food, the fecal matter going on in the sigmoid colon as well. So there, that's going to help me isolate. There's some areas I want to focus on. The nerves in this area deals with that mega blast, and I'll clarify that to the viewers in a moment, what we're talking about. So this region over here, in addition to digestive issues where he has trouble, okay, problems breaking down watermelon, pistachio, so, so on and so forth, he still may present with a small intestine issues, and the nerves responsible for that is usually located here, okay? Constipation, the bloating, and all the gas, the nerves that deals with that large intestine is usually innovations around this region over here. So I'm gonna take a closer look at these particular areas, see where the potential problems are. And also in regards to the deviated septum, also the sinuses where there's you know, dust mite allergies, so on and so forth. I'm gonna take a look, 
close to look, see what's going on in this neck region over here, but more importantly, in this mid cervical over here, deals with the trigeminal nerves and so on and so forth. So piecing all that data together with the history, so far the preliminary data we have on hand, we use this instrument over here to help confirm some more data because when the tissue gets damaged, there's gonna be that inflammatory process. And there's gonna be more increased vascular supply, allowing the body to introduce more white blood cells into the area so it can start healing that tissue area. Now, the side effect of that increased vascular supply is gonna be that increased temperature difference. And that's what this device here picks up. Now, the other thing I'm also seeing is his, I'm sorry, is his visualization. So I'm seeing some swelling and puffiness over here, some muscle spasms, this is guarding and protecting over here. There's also something around here. So again, all these data, they should correlate and correspond to say, okay, we've got potential here, potential here, potential here, so on and so forth. I want to be very sure that the area where we're adjusting is going to be the definitive ones we do need to address. Very small. We're just checking for all the potential problems, any swellings. Well, we already confirmed this, mm -hmm. and it's still there. Swelling here, swelling will be here. See the left hip, and we're just fine, but that right hip, that's a brick wall, the sacrum itself. Slight fixation here, but not too bad. See this fourth sacral segment, tender right there, is Yeah. See, it's not fully fixated. And I'll explain to you a reason why, in a moment, why there is a false positive going on here right now. And it's not really acute. So we're checking this fifth level bar right now. We've got some, quite a bit of swelling on the, on the right hand side. Very tender to touch. It's quite inferior right there. And the fourth, it's not too great either, but not as fixated and bad as the fifth level. So we're going to mark the fifth lumbar level. We're checking the structural integrity, the biomechanics of all the other spines, lumbar region. And we're moving up to the dorsals. Tender right there. Yes, 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 you got it. <laughs> yeah. See, this, see this dorsal vertebrae, it's not moving too well. The swelling right there. Again, we're checking down the integrity of the biomechanics of the dorsals. And this right here, tender right there. Oh, yeah, 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 right there. Yeah. Okay. Not too bad. See, there's a lot of lower. There's a lot of uh, muscle spasms and edema and swelling right at this lower cervical section right here. How does that feel right there? Yeah, not too good. Yeah, it doesn't feel that great, huh? Yeah. Uh, six cervicals in trouble. All right. Now, when we take a look at your spine over here, I always start just like a structural engineer. You want to take a look at the foundation first. Yeah. Now, what's interesting, what we found on the preliminary data during the examination, that there's some interesting little, you know, curveballs going on. Now, the same for myself, okay, when I take a look, I'm trying to make this into a three-dimensional image. In other words, I don't want to see just one dimension here, one dimension here, no. I'm trying to create this in my mind, full three dimensions. I want to see where your body is compensating and where it's not compensated properly. And accumulating all the other data is what we found in terms of history and neurologically where it's not working, okay? So going back to this, now the textbook says, ideally, the sacrum over here, we don't wanna go in too posterior, we don't wanna go too anterior. It's slightly posterior, 
just slightly, okay? And the same thing here as well, all right? We want your pelvis to be level. So it should be level pelvis to the floor, mm -hmm. okay? It's tilting just slightly downwards, okay? just a tiny bit, mm -hmm. okay? We're talking about like two millimeters dip over there. There's not a whole lot. Now, another thing that's interesting is this gluteal full line. Ideally, we want to be smack in the middle, but as you see it, it's bowing out over mm -hmm. here, okay? Now, because it's bowing out the way it's doing, and we test it on you, okay, anterior supreme misalignment and external rotation misalignment, it doesn't feel fun when we palpated these sacred inner joints over here. Now, that being said, I also tested way down here, and it was also painful. Why is that? And to reiterate why I said this was a false positive, mm -hmm. when we take a look at the sacral segments, there's actually five segments here, right? Mm -hmm. And it's the last bone to fuse into one bone. You're 22 years old right now. It doesn't fuse until 27 to 32, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, ideally, you should be nice straight line plumb to the floor. Yeah. It's not doing that. It's slightly tilted towards the right. Now, why is it doing that? Well, we have two major ligaments, right? We have the sacral spinous ligament. We also have the sacral tuberous ligaments, okay? So we have two major ligaments attaching from here and here as well. Now, when we have external rotation of this hip, what's going to happen with, with all this, with the sacrum itself? It's going to be dragged along for the ride. So that's why this one is being tugged as trying to misalign. Right? So when I test it on it, you said, ooh, not feeling fun. But when I thoroughly check the integrity of it, it's not fully misaligned itself, and you don't have significant edema. So that's why so it's not because of that. That's it's really actually right, correct. It's mm -hmm. from this external misalignment from this, and it's dragging this along for the right itself. Just like, just like these two points over here, just like just like this, okay. If this is being pulled, if there's external rotation, it's gonna yank it and yeah. drag it out, all right? Mm -hmm. So that's why. So that's what we got going on over here. Now the fact that you have both misalignments, that's what makes this a little tricky because I want to see these symmetrical, mm -hmm. and yet we see this one over here. It's a little more like cat's eye. It's doing that because we had an anterior superior misalignment. So. As we see over here, to make it easier for the viewers over here, we have these obturator holes over here. So as I start tilting this over here, okay, it start collapsing. That's what's giving that cat's eye appearance. Now, with an external misalignment over here, it should make this a little more larger, bigger. So that's what I'm saying. It's sort of like it says, okay, we're going, we're taking one step forward and one step backwards. Yeah. It's not 100%, so there's a little give, and we have a little, you know, that's why we see this little misalignment here, because with the anterior superior misalignment, okay, what it'll do is it'll make the sacrum over here, okay, go a little bit backwards over here, and with a posterior inferior misalignment, it'll make the sacrum over here go a little forward, a little more anterior, okay? So we got that interesting dynamic. That's why I'm saying for this one over here, no, it's like it's almost in that perfect sweet spot, okay? So that's why, in addition to, let's also take a look at what else is going with the biomechanics. Well, if we take a closer look over here, okay? This fifth lumbar vertebrae, it should line up with the sacrum over here. What I'm seeing instead is, you see this nerve? It got to come out of this tunnel over here. It's going backwards over here, and it went this way, all right? So in essence, okay, see that? We've got this foramen over here, the tunnel, tunnel. It's getting smaller, getting smaller. Where'd it go? All right, it got really small. Mm. So now I just want to keep in mind, okay, the nerves over here, you don't need a microscope to, you know, to take a look for them. No, they're mm. actually this size. Why? Because the brain is communicating from here all the straight down to innervate your large intestines, the bladder, the sexual organs, and your legs and knees and toes. So therefore, yeah, it's kind of important to have it this big of a highway. But if the tunnel collapses, pinching up that nerve, 
That's why we see all this constipated, fe undigested fecal matter. Okay, I want to see it like this, nice, clear, and white. But no, I was seeing all this. I just remembered mm -hmm. that like about two weeks ago, I started to get like sharp pain going from like, um, like the middle of my body up to my stomach, mm -hmm. like from like around here to like up here. And it was like really sharp and there was nothing I could do to relieve it. Mm -hmm. And then it would just go away. And this would just happen like periodically throughout the day. And it happened for like a week. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand what it was, but I knew it was related to like my digestive stuff going on. Well, that's what's going on over here. Now, here's another interesting dynamic is that again, with a slight tilt over here that tells me no, we have more EX dominant over here. Mm -hmm. Because if it's a AS misalignment, okay, if that was more prominent, it would actually make it a little more higher up. Okay, and when we adjust the AS ilium, it would actually make it more level. But no, instead we have it down here. So when we adjust the EX misalignment, it'll make it a little more level. Okay. Now, I don't want to go too crazy uh, deep on that adjustment is because, again, what it's going to do is it's going to make this sigmoid a little more posterior. It's kind of almost in its happy spot. Mm -hmm. So we're going to keep an eye on that on future visits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, because of this external rotation, what we've got going on over here and the way your body trying to compensate, mm -hmm. as we see over here, okay, with the rest of your spine, your whole entire spine itself, if it, you didn't have that anterior superior compensation, okay, to counter, counteract the EX misalignment, your whole entire spine would be actually be doing like this. So we're saying like your whole entire spine yeah. would be going more like this. Yeah. Okay. But instead, it didn't do that. It okay, goes right. It compensated by like it does that. There was like your first circuit breaker right here in your right hip. You went into that AS misalignment. But we still see evidence in your whole entire rest of your spine over here. It still did, and you can see, it's going along for a ride. Everything is rotating towards your body left. Okay? So we're talking spinous right, body left. Mm -hmm. So it's rotating this way. Now, here's the funny thing about it. Do you think if we're all the way like this, we could walk this way? <laughs> no. Now that's going to be a neat trick. Right? Yeah. So we have two gyroscopes in our brain that's forcing our body to think, I'm gonna keep my head straight on. Even the rest of my body is twisted like this way, head gotta be this way. Mm -hmm. So how do we counterbalance for that? Well, as we see over here, the rest of your body, it's twisting like this. Okay, and it ends right here and it counter twists opposite direction towards this way. So this region over here, I'm not surprised the, your bones and everything else is going to be twist like this way and twist that way. It's going to start irritating that nerve. And the nerves in this region over here innervates your small intestines. So that may affect digestive and absorptions in the small intestine itself. Now going up a little higher up, we start to see your body curving this way, curving that direction, okay, opposite direction, and it's ending over here. Now this region over here deals with the innovation of the stomach itself. And I'm going to show you over here. What is a Megan blast? All right. Well, here's the gist of it. We have two sphincters, okay? Mm -hmm. Two gates, if you will, okay? We know this one on here is mostly working on you. This one here is not. This one is more famous. We know this very well because when this is open, all the stomach acid goes back up your throat, heartburn. Okay, but no, it seems to be functional. Like acid reflux type yes. stuff? Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, we know this one on you is not working too well. Why? Because due to the nerves, that's not working too well on your large intestines over here, okay, this conveyor belt starts slowing down. Now, we do have bacteria and yeast in our intestinal system, and its primary job is to break down the nutrients. All right, to allow our body to start absorbing it. Right? Now the side effect of it, the byproduct of all that work is gonna be gas, okay? So all that gas gotta go somewhere. It's gonna go at one end, okay? And then it try to go on the other end. Now, if this gate was working properly, mm -hmm. it would block it. And it would just stay contained with the intestinal system. 
but it's not. It kept on going right through and it filled up in here. Mm -hmm. And because this is still working, if this was also open, all that gas would also come and you would fart right through your mouth. <laughs> Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> no way that happens. Yeah, that's going to be fun. <laughs> okay. Now, another component is this. Okay, we identified this region over here and this region over here. Okay. This one over here, that's what we're talking about before. If this nerve is irritated, it can affect the small intestines. Now, what most people don't realize is your nutrients are not being absorbed in the stomach. The stomach is more like a garbage compactor or like a you know the kitchen you know garbage disposal. Its primary purpose is actually to physically break up material, mm -hmm. to make it into much more smaller pieces, and also hydrochloric acid start even that you know like how say start breaking down more mm -hmm. materials. Mm -hmm. So and in addition to we have all these digestive enzymes from the liver and the pancreas dump into the small intestines, so we can further break it down and we get all the nutrients absorbed here. So within the small intestine itself, we have all these villi. okay? Now there's gotta be gates. So when all these food particles, they try to come in, okay? The nerves need to program these gates and say, hey, just, oh, okay. There's like a bouncer that says, hey, you could come in, you're good. <laughs> this other person, uh, no, we're not ready, you can't. You gotta stay out there, you gotta digest a little more. Mm -hmm. Now apparently, the signals from the brain itself, okay, is not getting this critical information to this region over here. So therefore, the brain, like the bouncer itself, is trying to say, hey, wait a second, who am I supposed to let in? Is this guy good? This guy's not good? What's the story on here? So therefore, if it keeps on rejecting, boom, diarrhea, right? Mm -hmm. So in other words, it knows it says, hey, whoa, this thing is really not good. We gotta get rid of this guy. As in other words, this, you know, like this guy who's waiting online, you know, this guy's a psychopath. You know, we let him in, you know, he's gonna do cause more trouble inside the you know, inside the clubhouse, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I want him in. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where diarrhea comes to play. Now, so we got now I'm not saying we're gonna adjust all these areas, but I'm mm -hmm. gonna double check, see what's going on with all these areas itself. We already identified the right hip. That is what I'm gonna address first. But I'm gonna double check, see what's going on here, double check here. We may need to adjust this one. And then, just to touch base, we found a potential problem at the sixth cervical. Now, it is a little lower than what I traditionally find because the trigeminal nerve area, okay, what it innovates here is your mucous membrane. Why is that important? Because your sinuses, you mentioned about, okay, I got dust mite allergy, you know, dust allergy. All this dander, so on and so forth. Okay, now the primary purpose. Okay, and that's what we're about to examine on you in a bit. Okay, when we take a look, okay, we have the little septum itself. Okay, and then we have some conches. Okay, we have three of them. All right, on each side. Now the purpose of these fellows over here is to create that vortex effect. Okay. And when we breathe in, we don't want just a simple, just a huge wind gust going inside. Why? Because we have sinus cavities. We have a frontal sinus, you know, the what you call nasal sinus over here, maxillary sinus, sphenoidal sinus, ethmoid sinus, so on and so forth. Okay. Mm -hmm. So all these cavities on here, they should have no turbulence whatsoever. If they're all in proper alignment, okay, and our skull in proper alignment, right? Then it should be able to, if there's any potential to breathe inside, it should all kick out and it should be fine. Now, what people don't realize, we don't have this one huge solid bone in our skull. There's actually many pieces, right? Actually more than hundred pieces in our skull itself. Now, every time we breathe, our skull, just by one millimeter, expands, okay? And then when we exhale, collapses a little bit. When we walk, the cerebral spinal fluid also circulates in and out of our skull. It provides nourishment and so on and so forth to the brain itself. Okay, that's why we have all these, you know, all these folds in the brain so that the cerebral spinal fluid can nourish all these areas, increase surface area. Now, again, for the cerebral spinal fluid to go in and out of the skull, what happens? The skull, again, all the pieces need to expand and contract. 
just like a very gentle heartbeat. Okay, that's what it needs to do. However, if the neurons are not functioning properly and you have some kind of trauma or micro trauma or some kind of new, you know, some kind of issue, the skulls themselves, okay, it's not going to realign perfectly. One area of sight is going to be stuck. So in essence, instead of having this nice straight line, nope, now we're going to have one here, and then we got a nice little ledge over here. So when we had that nice little ledge, instead of the wind keep on blowing like this, no, nope, it's going to start accumulating, a piling up debris right at this corner over here. When that starts <laughs> happening, okay, what happened is this. The body says, hey, wait a second. All that garbage is starting to build up in a corner. It doesn't belong in there, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, to exacerbate that even more, again, I'm going to confirm that in a bit, mm -hmm. okay? If the surgeons, if they took out one of the, some of these, these conches over here, we don't have that the turbulence. Torque. Yeah, the turbulence, okay? Okay, it goes by either names, okay? Gotcha, gotcha. If, if we disturb that and we either partially remove it or remove it altogether, we don't have that vortex effect anymore, mm -hmm. all right? So therefore, instead of basically we want like a tornado inside, if we don't have that vortex effect, then it's gonna have a hard time for your body to try to push that debris out of your body, okay? So then your body's forced to do is, okay, how do we get all that garbage out of your sinuses, mm -hmm. okay? Next level is, okay, we need to have the white blood cells release a lot of it to act like garbage trucks to do to physically digest and break down all that material and get it out of your body, okay? So that's why you may notice that, hey, wait a second, my sinus, it feels all clogged up, okay? And it feels like, I gotta, like blow my nose real hard to get all this junk out. And it sometimes, doesn't work. Correct, or sometimes I just wanna use a neti pot just to try to flush <laughs> all that junk 100%, out. 100%, 100%. Right? Yeah, so now if this keeps on accumulating and it's chronic for many years, over time, the body says, Hey, wait a second, we need to get rid of all this garbage, but we just don't have enough surface area to introduce more white blood cells and more digestive enzymes in the mucus to try to break all the stuff down. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right team, let's start building up. Increase the surface area. So that's, you may have heard the term, polyps. Mm -hmm. So all these polyps start growing to increase the surface area to dump out even more digestive enzymes and white, more white blood cells to break down this form material and get it out. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's what the store is going to be. I'm going to take a closer look, see what's going on in that regard. Over here, that's what we discussed before as well. If there is some kind of nerve interference going on over here, that help explain why we had this mega blast. Normal size should be that small. That mm -hmm. tiny little gas over here, not this big one over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what we see those over here. It's all this huge big pocket of air right over here. So, how, so that's what a mega blast is, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. So by restoring nerve function here, it's gonna help close off that lower sphincter over there. Now it's not extremely bad as some of your viewers saw, it, and I believe you saw that earlier video with the mega blast. It was oh, yeah. really huge. Okay. okay. And you can really see the sphincter wide open. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like moderate, it's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Next component I'm seeing here as well is this six circle over here. That six circle, same story as well. It went backwards and tilted this way as well. Same as the bottom? Correct. Okay. So therefore, it's causing some serious interference to that nerve, not allowing it to work properly. I also see some, some issues here at the fifth circle as well. I'm going to double check on this on future visits, mm -hmm. but I believe this is going to be okay. Right? But again, we're going to keep an eye on it. Mm -hmm. So now, by addressing this, and we're going to take a look, see what's going on here, but we may have need to address this one, and this is going to eventually provide more stability to do biomechanics of your spine itself. And then I check a look, see what's going on with the sinus cavities. Now I will say, the surgeon did do a good job with the septum because, see this over here? That looks very straight. Yeah, it's pretty straight, except yeah. here. Uh -huh. See that right there? Uh -huh. It's slightly tilted to the right. See, this main septum itself is straight, but this top part, nope, it's over to the right. 
And they did trim a bit of your turbulence itself in the colleges. Yeah, he said he would he try to do that to pro, to allow more air to enter my nose. And unfortunately, it's going to cause a different problem. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I can't make you grow new conscious in there and it's going to happen. <laughs> so in other words, you're going to have the sinus problems from time to time. Okay. Right? So, yeah. Okay. Uh, I was saying that my best buddy is a box of tissues. Like if I wouldn't have it next to me, I wouldn't survive more than a week because I always have a handy like in my room, in my backpack, in my jackets, everywhere. It's just that you know, it's always uh, stuffy and I don't know if it's subconscious that I want to like blow all of it out to get it cleared up or even sometimes, you know, there's, uh, it's dripping or, you know, all these issues with the, with the nose. So I, I need my tissues. Otherwise, uh, you know, I hear you. I hear you. All right. Let's get to work. Now, because of all his lumbar vertebrae and all his spines, all PR, meaning ro spinous rotated to the right. I want to do a pull maneuver so that when I do this pull maneuver, it's going to knock up two birds, one stone. We're going to address his right hip and it's going to also help realign his lumbar spines more center line. If I pushed it, it's going to make this lumbar spine even more PR, which is what we want to avoid. We don't want to twist them up even more. There we go. Practice over here. Oh. What about anything with your nose? A little bit clearer. Okay. It pulls off your other nose. Still there. But it really still there, but it's a little bit better. Yeah, because we already start untwisting your nerves and you know your spine a bit. Mm -hmm. Restoring your nerves somewhat a bit over there, taking some of the pressure off that nerve interference. That's why it's starting to work a bit there. How's this going right here? No, no. No, no, what? <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> it hurts. Gotcha. Okay. So that's what I figured. So you're going to need a hopping handle with that ball. Here's a little piece. Oh. Okay. Come up a little more. Just relax. Good. Just breathe. Right there. Let it go. Let it roll, though. How is the breathing? Insane. Good. Insanely good. <laughs> In what way? Okay, block off your right nose. See how that feels. Your other right. Okay, we're it's getting be It's better, but like when I block it, it doesn't feel, it doesn't sound better, but I'm just breathing like this. Feels like it's like significantly better than when I came in. How much improvement would you say from before? At least twofold. So double like at least double, double better. So whatever like oxygen percentage, like double that. Okay. Well, fortunately, we don't have a VO2 max machine. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Interesting how they shifted things around on you. So yeah. He did operate on the right side. See, it's like completely caved in. Yeah. There's nothing over here. You feel this? Yeah. You still have a cartilage over there. Yeah. Yeah. So he didn't touch the, the left side. So that's good. Knees are both slightly out. Max, our sinuses, both of them are out. Out? Frontal sinus. They're misaligned too. Okay. It's slightly misaligned. Oh. Ah, oh. there's one. But your nasal bones out. Oh, <laughs> <Here it goes. laughs> we're almost done. Max, our sinus is out. Hold on, we're gonna set this. There we go. There we go. Oh, what the hell? Sorry, I had to set it. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's also out too. Hold on. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Oh. This frontal side is the side. There you go. Check out the sphenoid. Sphenoid slightly misaligned. Good. Come on up. Oh. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Now I'll give it a try. Try the left and the right nostril. Okay. Worse. Okay. That one's pretty good. No, I got more congestions. Everything's leaking out a bit. Do you feel like something's going back, back your throat right now? Back in my throat? Yeah. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, because that's your sinuses draining out right now. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I feel it. Okay, I'll set this up a little more deeper. Okay, a little more deeper. Oh, ah! Oh my god. That did it. Yeah. Okay, now I'll try. Yeah, it sounds like it's still yeah, more drained. Even more it. congested. Yeah. So, how is it? What's different about it right now? The so, you say there's more congestion. What else? Um, well, you were saying about the draining. It feels mm -hmm. like there's something like, you know, like tripping in the back. Okay. A little bit. So, this is what the store is going to be, right? This is, there's usually three common scenarios. Either A, you're gonna feel like there's like, whoa, there's a lot of stuff, like a waterfall down my back of my throat. Mm -hmm. okay. B, you feel like, okay, there's a trickle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay? Or C, you feel like, huh, there's nothing coming down my throat, but I feel like I need to like cough something out, but there's nothing to cough out, mm -hmm. okay? So that's what the story is gonna be. So it all depends on how clogged up all your sinuses are. And everything right now is trying to drain, partly, part of it is through your nose, but most yeah, of, I feel like I need a tissue, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and then most of it is back down its throat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's how the drainage happens over there. What I recommend is this, okay? When you uh, go back to your home, mm -hmm. okay? I recommend either this nice steam bath or mm -hmm. a neti pot. Just try to clear all your sinuses out. Okay. And then we'll see you in the next appointment. Okay. All right? Sounds good. All right, you're welcome. All right, thank you, doctor. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. You're all set. See you next time. Awesome. All right, take care.